my side as well to the Women in Tech Global Conference. Apologies for some uh, technical issues that we have just encountered. I am uh, genuinely uh, delighted to be uh, able to have this you know, opportunity to share my story of how I transitioned into, into data, uh, we could say fairly recently. Uh, and within this short talk that uh, I will be having, I will be uh, um, uh, touching upon the, diver the importance of uh, diversity, so why it is important um, to have diverse teams, not so much, not so only with uh, more uh, women participation, but also other minority groups. Then uh, we will move to uh, me sharing the story uh, of how I started my uh, professional uh, career, and then um, also shed some light on um, important aspect of once you know somebody is already has entered the field. Uh, and I would like to touch upon the importance of uh, mentorship. Um, yeah, so let us uh, start with the really important um, topic, uh, not just nowadays, uh, but yeah, uh, overall we see, especially in tech, that there is a lack of um, different minority groups, uh, you know, uh, working and also making important decisions. So let's first say why uh, and discuss why diversity matters. Right, so we can see that uh, while women uh, make nearly, you know, half of the global uh, workforce, they represent only uh, thirty percent of uh, IT employees. So, of course, this number varies um, on the report that you would look at, but some around one thirty is quite common. You would see uh, that's a pretty low uh, number of women participation. Uh, so here, more or less focus on the women uh, and not other um, minority groups. And why, uh, you know, uh, lots of companies, you can see a lot of uh, talks uh, that there should be more uh, inclusion, right? So why is that important? So various studies show that um, diverse companies uh, perform much better, uh, so financially, um, hire better talent and uh, have much more engaged employees, right? So once you have much more diverse uh, teams working on specific projects. It's also critical as it enables for the products that specific companies or services that they develop or produce uh, are much inclusive, safer, um, that everyone or most of the people would take into consideration. There was one study done that uh, saying that more gender uh, diverse companies are around 48% uh, more likely, as I said before, uh, to outperform the uh, least uh, gender diverse companies. So this just briefly, I, I thought it would be great to start or kick off the presentation with having, you know, um, or touch upon these important facts uh, before I share, start to share my story. And here is a chart of uh, women uh, participation in tech industries, right? So what we can see here is the higher we go when it comes to the, um, uh, let's say, seniority levels in tech, less of participation uh, of women we see. And ideally, right, um, uh, I feel we could do more about, about that too. So... Um, I would like to share also how I started uh, with my professional career, what I'm doing currently now, and also the process, you know, the thinking and all the experiences that led me to um, try and be and try and, and also uh, work in data and how uh, I actually found it to be um, and yeah, exciting and a rewarding field to be in. So I started a couple of years ago in European Parliament, uh, where I was uh, working for a few months in the DG Bud, uh, working on yeah making drafts for budget of 2018, uh, you know, present or joining different kind of plenary sessions, and be of help when it comes to that. Uh, shortly after, I joined uh, Bitstamp, which is one of the oldest cryptocurrency exchange, where I was um, business slash compliance analyst, um, analyzing uh, different kind of crypto movements in the market and so. Um, and then Destiny took me to Revolut, which is uh, a fintech company offering a whole host of uh, products. Also there, I started as a business, uh, also in compliance roles at the beginning, but then throughout years, moved into more technical um, roles. So after I left actually a few months ago, so I was when I left, I was more much more in technical 
uh, engaged or working on technical projects indeed. And now I'm super uh, delighted uh, and uh, grateful to um, be working at Adyen, which is a uh, payments um, provider, payments uh, company. Uh, and what I do uh, specifically or currently is, uh, so my tasks revolve around operational and uh, development uh, tasks uh, around um, Looker. So Looker is a BI tool. Um, and why I find it so uh, um, exciting is I can yeah learn more about data on the job. And also while in addition to that, also um, continuously upskill myself by doing any kind of projects and so. Um, and, you know, put all the, let's say, the things that I have learned so much in practice, and it's still in process, right? So I would say I'm still at the very early age, uh, or not age, but process, uh, but nevertheless, it's uh, super exciting to um, to be to be working in the data field um, and uh, uh, learn a lot. I would, uh, I thought it would be great to, um, to share also how I, you know, started um, uh, or diverted to more to data field um, and some suggestions or how, yeah, some steps uh, that allowed me to um, to be also, you know, somehow uh, thriving, let's say so. So I think what I first, um, quite some time ago, I thought it, it's really important to think about, you know, or I thought about my interests and um, what would be the best way to start, right? So I think that is uh, pretty crucial. Uh, and then I started to work on uh, simple projects. So um, back like a year, maybe less than a year ago, I started to work on some um, projects, really basic ones. Uh, and I did that by following specific or like YouTube, um, let's say, um, influence or data specialists who have their own YouTube channels and I just followed along. Uh, so that was one thing uh, that I did. And another way of how I could get to know different kind of aspects of what's happening within the data domain uh, was to um, connect with the uh, professionals, data experts who have years and decades of experience was to um, organize uh, different kind of events. So what I do, uh, I, I organize uh, conferences uh, or events within uh, WIT, so which is like an initiative by Stanford. Uh, and also by Deep Learning Initiative, which is uh, a um, initiative uh, started um, that started in 2017 by Andrew Ng. Um, so what I do is invite uh, various speakers who operate in data science uh, fields or also tech, we could say, right? Um, and by doing so, I not only, of course, get better organizational skills, but also get to know the respective areas better. Um, I wouldn't say in depth, but at least I know get to know what's happening in, um, uh, for example, I had some projects about or it, events about machine learning, about recommendation systems and things like this. Um, uh, and of course, by doing so, uh, you also get to know what's, um, if that maybe could also be something that would interest you, right? Um, uh, then I uh, think what uh, why I found why I actually find working data uh, really rewarding and exciting uh, so far uh, um, is that one part that is uh, super exciting is the whole process of problem solving. So, for example, um, that's something I also get to hear from more experienced uh, professionals or experts and machine learning engineers. Is that you know once you're giving that specific um, problem that uh, you work on um, for your stakeholders within the company or so is um, yeah while you are solving especially after you solve it there is a tremendous feeling of yeah achieving making making an impact um, making that you made a difference so that's something that is deeply rewarding uh, I would say uh, the another thing is um, while solving uh, your specific project, you get to work with a whole host of different stakeholders. So it depends on the project that you will do. Um, but so within the company as outside, you would get to know um, yeah, talent people, uh, get to, uh, um, and by doing so, not only yeah, work on the project, but also learn new things, which is uh, super exciting uh, as well. 
And last but not least, there is an option or ocean of possibilities, right? So once you start maybe, uh, let's say, as a data analyst or so, doesn't mean that, um, you know, your fate is to be there forever. You have uh, so many options um, to, um, to test um, or to try. Um, of course, uh, considering that you are upskilling yourself, that you're learning new things and uh, you um, maintain your curiosity. And so this is one part, right, when you enter the field. And uh, another, um, I think, would say really good ingredient for somebody to also thrive in the new um, data position or tech position is, uh, from my perspective, also importance of um, allyship or mentorship. So um, their mentoring, mentoring is like a pillar of support, right, that uh, this can be done via professional groups or one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and there is also um, some interesting facts um, that mentoring can boost, you know, uh, it can be an effective way of boosting diversity. And um, there was a study done that shown that um, they boost the representation of women and minorities uh, by 9 to uh, 24 percent. But here I'm not, you know, I wouldn't like to um, focus on diversity groups. I think it's overall important to have mentor um, when starting, uh, especially when changing a uh, career. And another uh, super exciting and important thing is that mentorship can improve, you know, um, employee engagement um, and can, you know, create an organization in which learning becomes a part of uh, overall culture. Um, so, yeah, I think that is uh, super important for somebody not just to... Um, you know, upskill themselves, learn new, new things, but also to thrive in in the field. So that's um, briefly uh, from my side. Um, uh, I'm open for any questions and again, apologies for a bit of uh, disruption at the very beginning. No worries, you did masterfully without slides. I didn't really enjoy listening to you. And so everyone else, we have a question, but before we go and take the question, I would like to say that something that resonated with me, something what you said, making an impact is deeply rewarding and mm -hmm. working with different stakeholders and how it really helps to learn something new. And I think something new that you learned today, how to deliver a presentation without slides <laughs> in a really impressive way. So thank you so much for doing that. And let's take a question from Sushmita. So she's asking, how do you deal with problem solving when you don't have sufficient data? Ah, good question. So at the moment, uh, I am a um, uh, um, BI specialist so, or BI administrator within ADIN. So that wouldn't be, uh, the, let's say, one of the problems that I would encounter. But I would, in this case, how I would approach it is to take with the stakeholders um, to get the sufficient data. Or maybe if I could have like a sufficient, uh, maybe sub question would be um, meaning like um, data for a, a wider time horizon or so. But I think I would just go back to the stakeholders um, and try to get more, let's say, data for the for the projects that uh, I have been assigned to or that I would be working on. I hope it just ask. <laughs> yeah. I and as you said, working like being able to reach out to stakeholders, I think this is really good. Okay, fantastic. And I think uh, Madia just confirmed my statement about uh, you doing a great job even without presentation. <laughs> so congrats to you. You should be proud. And thank you so much for joining us today. Everyone who is listening to us to make sure to drop by by audience, audience uh, booth and say hi to Brigitte if she's there. <laughs> thank you so much, Brigitte. I also will drop your LinkedIn so people can connect with you. And thank you for being with us. Stay with us for the rest of the conference. Thank you so much. Would you like me to share the presentation uh, or the slides? Yeah, if you, if, you can, if you can share a link, for example, if you have a shareable uh, document, so you can share it just in the chat. I think yeah, many people would so love much. to see it. Fantastic. Thank you. So thank yeah. you. It was a pleasure to have you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.